Dash. Something a little bit different for you today. I haven't been doing a great deal of reading since I last uploaded a video, and so I thought instead of rambling on about something I've read years and years and years ago, I would do a, something a little bit different for you. I realised the other day that I've actually mentioned a couple of times in previous videos that I've picked a book up at work or I talked to a customer at work or something at work happened and it occurred to me that only you would know that I actually work at a local bookstore. Not surprisingly, the amount of customers that I have coming up to me saying, oh my god, you work in a bookstore, you must have so much time to read, this must be amazing. No, it doesn't work like that, it's a job, job requires work, work requires work. Now I do really enjoy my job, truly, and it's one of the best part-time jobs that I can have whilst putting myself through uni. So I just want to put a disclaimer that nothing I say today affects how I view the retail industry or the book industry or anything like that. Generally we have a really, really good pool of customers. I get along really, really well with the customers and the people that I work with and I just really like working with books. And occasionally, like all jobs, you do get the odd customer who comes in and kind of just rocks the boat or the one question that you get asked over and over again. And so for you today, I am going to be doing a pros and cons of working in a bookstore, specifically an Australian bookstore. And in order to not make this video like an hour long, I'm going to split it into two. The first one I'll do a cons and, pro and then pros so we can finish on a nice lighthearted note. So number one is customers who argue with me over the title of books. I had a lady come into work the other day who was really lovely and I was having a nice little chat to her until she asked me to find her a book called To Kill a Hummingbird. Now the majority of you are rolling your eyes because you read books, you know it's not called that. But when you're talking to a 67 year old lady who's called this book To Kill a Hummingbird for her entire life, trying to explain to her that she doesn't have her facts right is very hard to do without sounding patronising. More often than not, when you try and correct a customer on the title of a book or the concept of a book or, you know, the even the genre of a, of a title, it ends up in an argument. People get really defensive over the information that they hold dear and, funnily enough, titles of books seems to be in that category. I find that the easiest way to correct a customer on a title of a book is to now show them the book itself and say, was it to kill a mockingbird that you're after because then they're not arguing with you if they disagree, they're arguing with Harper Lee. The second downside to working in a bookstore is bad books. If it isn't obvious already by the very small number of reviews that both Ash, you and I have done, um, I'm a young adult reader first and foremost. So when the book of the month or the author of the month is like a sports author or a non-fiction or an erotica author, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. I'm not good at plugging things that I'm not passionate about. We've actually got our Father's Day promotion coming up and one of the hardest things at the moment is trying to convince children to buy this great sports biography for your dad. When they ask you what it's about, you pause awkwardly because I don't know anything about them. On top of that, when it comes to books like the infamous Fifty Shades of Grey, it was a bestseller. We had to plug it to people. We have to say, hey, here's a great book. Everyone's after it. You'll really enjoy it. It sucks. And I always feel uncomfortable knowing that I could be giving a book across to a customer and they might bring it back and say, look, I don't like this. I just like doing a good job. My third point is a bit of a doozy and addresses something that we get talked to or complained to about quite a lot. We have a lot of people coming up to the counter, like I'm sure a lot of other bookstores do, asking us, uh, excuse me miss, why do you have 20 copies of Fifty Shades of Grey, but I can't find my favourite book over here? We have people asking us, why do we have only books two and four of the Vampire Academy, when we have every book in every colour and every title of one of the classics? This is my chance to point out that, guys, it's not our fault. Here's where I just want to point out that customers and viewers, if you tend to go into bookstores and think this as well, take a moment before you complain about it. Bookstores are businesses. It's just an issue of supply and demand. If you come up to a counter and say, hey, I want to order a hardcover copy of The Darkest Minds. I see you don't have one on your shelves. 
we will order it in. If you get all your friends to come into the store and say, hey, we all want hardcover copies of The Darkest Minds, chances are we'll actually start to stock it regularly. This was actually a big issue with John Green's books. Around about ooh, five years ago, you wouldn't be able to see them in store. You'd have to go online to Book Depository or Amazon or some other source because no one knew about them. They weren't that popular back then and it's really just with the release of The Fault in Our Stars that his books have just gone really, really, really well. But that being said, people came in and asked for them and now we stock them. Really, the problem usually is that People come into the store, they say, I want this book, I don't want to wait for it to come in, which is fine, I totally get that, I get frantic about books, I want to read them straight away too. But then when we ask, do you want to order it in? You say no and you leave. My fourth point is kind of not about bookstores, but about Australian books in general, and that's the covers. Australia gets the worst book covers ever. You wouldn't be able to tell from the collections that I have because I tend to buy a book and then they release a new cover overseas or I see the new cover overseas and then I go and buy that edition anyway. I'd show you the difference between an Australian book cover and usually like a US book cover but I actually tend to give a lot of my original Australian covers away to friends so I can't do that sorry. The other thing is release dates. We in Australia get books months after they are released in the States or the UK because people forget about us. I have customers raging at me all the time because they saw online and were promised that they'd get their book by this date and when we say look well you didn't really check with us and that's not the Australian release date they just pack up and leave. Guys I want my copy of Allegiant just as much as the rest of you on time but it's not going to happen. My sixth and final point is customers who talk above you or judge you based on your taste in books. I can't even count the number of times that I've been belittled by customers based on my taste in books or the fact that I haven't read their favourite book. I had a guy who came into it the other day and was like in trying to insult me because I hadn't read Hirokumi Murakami's 1Q84 and I just kind of like took a step back and said, whoa, I'm, I'm 19, I work in a bookstore, I'm at uni, I don't have the time, all the patience, all the interest to read a book that is about this big and translated from Chinese or Japanese. Like don't get me wrong, I really want to read the book, apparently it's amazing but I haven't read it yet. Apparently that was a huge problem with this guy. I hope this cleared a couple of things up for people who go into bookstores and ask those kind of questions. It's not your fault for not knowing, but just have a think about it before you say anything next time. So yeah, Ash, I hope you enjoyed that one. I'll leave a link to part two and the pros of working in a bookstore in the little box at the bottom. And let me know if you like this one. Thanks guys, bye.